Okay, so in this video we're going to show you how to fix analog drift on a PlayStation 4 controller. Uh, for this we'll need any screwdriver with a Y000 bit, and pretty much any pry tool with a thin edge. Okay, so on this controller, it's the right stick is drifting on this axis, so we're going to want to remember that so we know which one to fix. Uh, first thing you want to do is peel off the sticker here. Uh, to see if there's a screw underneath it. In this case, there's not. Other ones I've worked on do have a screw there. Uh, and in my opinion, it looks a lot better than just punching through the sticker. So we're going to want to take our Y000 screwdriver. Undo all four of the screws. Just like that. I want to take our pry tool, stick it in right here by the buttons, pry it open like that. Same thing on the other side, pry it open like that, and then just crack it open like an oyster. So be careful, there is this one ribbon cable here. You can just yoink that out right there. <clears throat> take out the battery, pull by the cable, it's fine on a connector this small battery just slides out. There'll be one more screw right there. I'm going to want to take that out. Now this screw is exactly the same as the ones that hold the case together so it's fine to put them in the same area. That plastic piece will come out and there will be one more ribbon cable over here. Okay. And there's a plastic clip on each side. Now you want to be careful when you're pulling these up because there's two wires on each side for the vibrator motors. You can just flip it over like this. And now remember, since we flipped it over, it was the right stick that was drifting. Now it's going to be the left one. So we'll take this left one off. We'll take our pry tool. And there are three clips, one on the top and one on each side. Okay. <clears throat> we can take our pry tool and get the white piece out. Be very gentle when you're doing this. Okay, so now that you have that piece out, you can take a Q-tip and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. down a little bit more. And so that's a graphite pad there. They use it as a variable resistor. So you're going to want to wipe that down. Try and get the Q-tip in there. Don't wipe too hard, but do make sure you get all the dirt off. Uh, so in some cases this might be broken or actually physically damaged. In that case you will need to desolder these three pins right there, slide this up and put a new one in. Uh, but in this case, we can just fix it by doing that. And if we bring this over, you're going to want to inspect this. It might be a little hard to see on the camera. Um, <clears throat> it's this part here, this part here, this part there. So if those tips are discolored, uh, like the rest of it is, the rest of it doesn't matter. It can be purple, yellow, red, whatever it is. Uh, but it's those three parts, if those are discolored, you're going to want to take a soldering iron. And I don't want to hold that with my finger. Just tin over the edges. Like that, and make sure they're nice and silver. Okay. Now that we've done that, just let it cool off for a second. Now we want to. Is this the same for the Xbox and PlayStation controllers? 
Uh, no, so this is only for PlayStation controllers. While this does work on Xbox controllers, uh, some of the time, a lot of times with the Xbox One Elite controllers and Xbox One controllers, um, I find it's better to just replace the joystick because usually when one go, they all go. Um, and usually it's actually damaged. It's not just dirty. Um, so this is the difference in the manufacturing or something? Yeah, they use a different <coughs> joystick type. So, the screwdriver make that nice. Okay. Now you should feel it click in there. So you want to squeeze it like this. Move it back and forth some. Just to work out any residue that might still be there. Put this part back on. Make sure you can hear the button click with it and it's not moving around too much. And then you can slide it back in there. So at this point, you can hear both the clips on either side click into place. There is that one ribbon cable behind there. You can usually get it with your fingernails, but you may need tweezers. And remember to slide that back in. And you can screw on this part here. We can put our battery back in. The battery connector only fits in one way, so don't worry about reverse polarity. Um, if you need to push it on really hard, then flip it around should go on easier. So we want to get this ribbon cable back plugged in. That might be a little hard for me to do on camera. Here. Okay, make sure it's nice and snug. And this part is a tricky part. So there's this clear lip. And it'll go not here, but in here. So you should see a little groove right there, that plastic part. You'll want to slip it in there. Initially, it'll want to just go like that. But you want it to go back and get inside that lip. That's what makes the little bar of light right there. Squeeze it, you should hear all the clips snap back together. Now how do you test it now <clears throat> at this point? And at this point, before you put the screws in, you'd want to test it. Uh, so over here we have HTML5 gamepad tester, that's the one I use. Um, so you can plug in a normal whatever cable your controller takes. If it goes to USB like Xbox and PlayStation controllers do nowadays. Go into USB hub, and you can see now the right stick is no longer drifting. You will see them wiggle around and vibrate some in the middle. That's normal for PlayStation controllers, uh, not for Xbox controllers. Xbox controllers, uh, any of this data will only update when you make a significant change. This updates automatically. Uh, so without you pressing any buttons or doing anything, it'll change. And then we can just make sure that all the buttons work, so the right and left trigger, bumpers, all those buttons, they'll show up in various areas here. Do those. Analog sticks in the middle. The button for this. Options, share, PlayStation button. Then when you press down on the joysticks, Okay. Great, so, so now we put the looks, screws back in. Yep, looks like everything is working. So, it's just what you'd think putting the screws back in. Um, screw it back together. No specific order for this, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure they're nice and firm. Chasing the screw around. <laughs> yeah, 
And so that's a relatively fast and easy way uh, to repair analog drift on a PlayStation 4 controller uh, without having to replace the whole analog stick. So for some other controllers, um, it's easier and in my, in my opinion, it's best to just replace the whole analog stick so you can see the both the resistors on the side, the swivel mechanism in the middle, and then there's the button on the side for when you press down. Um, it's kind of hard to do this without melting it, uh, so it takes some skill, but in some controllers it's just better to do that. On these ones it works fine, as you can see. Uh, so I hope you guys have a good day. hope you learned something.